Hello, Delaware. Welcome to another edition of We All Go to Washington. I'm your host, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, Delaware's at-large member in the U.S. House of Representatives. In August, I was joined by Senator Cory Booker and a great panel of Delawareans, including State Senator Margaret Rose Henry. This will be our final episode of We All Go to Washington as election season ends in a few days. But you can take a look back at some of our most popular Channel 28 episodes on our Facebook and YouTube channel. In tonight's episode, I'll be joined by an exceptional slate of guests, your Democratic ticket on November 6th, including one of the most dedicated public servants I've ever met, our Senator Tom Carper. Before I welcome my guests, I want to take a minute to make sure each of you has your plan to vote. Polls are open Tuesday, November 6th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it's important that everyone makes their voice heard this election, and that starts with a plan. Do you know where your polling place is? What time will you go to, to vote? And how will you get there? And are you bringing a plus one with you? Look out for more information at the end of this episode about these important questions and how to answer them. Right now, we've got an exciting show for you and a lot of ground to cover. In our past few episodes, we've covered the importance of voting, how you can get involved, and knowing your rights as a voter. Today, our guests are the people that you will see on your ballot in just a few days, and they will be able to tell you a little bit about themselves and the office they're running for. Welcome to the show. This is the first time in Delaware's history that the majority of statewide candidates are women. Across Delaware, we are seeing the most diverse slate of candidates step up and run. This fall, we will have a record number of African-American women in the Delaware House, and potentially the first Latina in the House and in the Delaware Senate. This historic achievement isn't contained to just Delaware. Across the country, we are seeing women and people of color stepping up and proving that we can run, win, and lead our country. Now, I get the opportunity to introduce somebody uh, who is working on our team, Iris. Iris is actually our campaign coordinator, and she will be conducting an interview uh, that will showcase some of the people that you're going to see on the ballot. Thank you all for being here. We're first going to want to start off and say, you know, who we are and what we're running for. The Congresswoman does not need any introduction, but she does run every two years. And we'll start with you, Ms. Jennings. Thank you, Iris. My name is Kathy Jennings. Mm -hmm and I am running to be Delaware's next Attorney General. Thank you. And Ms. McGinnis? I'm Kathy McGinnis, and I'm running to be Delaware's next State Auditor and Delaware's first female State Auditor. Okay. And last but not least, Ms. Davis. <laughs> I'm Colleen Davis, mm -hmm. and I'm running for State Treasurer. Okay, thank you. So now that we know what everyone's running for, we want to also know, what does the office that you're running for do? Ms. Jennings? The Attorney General in Delaware is the people's lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, protecting victims who um, have been subjected to criminal actions mm -hmm. and making sure that all Delawareans are safe from uh, crime, abuse, mm -hmm. and fraud. Okay, thank you. Ms. McGinnis? Um, the auditor's office is the guardian of the Delaware's taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that the state monies are spent the way they were intended to be spent mm -hmm. and rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse. All right. Ms. Davis? Yes, thank you. Um, the treasurer actually sits on several boards mm -hmm. um, as well as manages the cash that flows in and out of the state. Mm -hmm. One of the um, important roles of the treasurer is to sit on the pardons board, mm -hmm. the agriculture board, mm -hmm. the um, state employees health benefits and pension boards. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Congresswoman. <laughs> thank you, Iris. Uh, I actually brought a prop. This is a, a guide to services that we produced for our office because a lot of times people don't know what the congressional offices do. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do, number one, we pass laws that impact you at home and in your communities. Number two, our job is to advocate for you as a constituent. So if you have a problem with the IRS or Medicare or Social Security, any of those federal agencies, you can contact our office and get help. And then number three, we look for resources to help the state of Delaware as well in the form of grants and help navigate issues that agencies might have. Um, bottom line, we also provide the check and balance 
with the president so those are the main roles of our office but if you need a copy of the guide we have them in english and spanish as well ok thank you very much so now the biggest question is you know what are you guys going to do in these offices once you are elected miss jenny iris i'm running to make delaware a safer place for all of us to live to mm -hmm. work and most importantly, to raise our children. Mm. I am running to make the criminal justice system fair and equal to everyone, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of the size of our wallet, mm. or regardless of the zip code where we live. Delaware is experiencing an opioid epidemic, and mm -hmm. people are dying in unprecedented numbers. I want to make sure, as the next Attorney General, that I provide effective treatment, expanded treatment services throughout Delaware for those in need, and not a prison cell when it is safe to do so. Okay, thank you. And Ms. McGinnis? Um, the, the Auditor's Office has many challenges, and I tell people it's not what it was, Ben, it's what it could be and should be. And it's more than just numbers, and it should be relevant to every Delawarean who cares how their tax dollars are spent. Uh, first, I think we need to take a pulse and actually audit the auditor's office, uh, look at our staffing, look at the resources, and incorporate technology to bring it up to the highest standards that it can be. Okay, thank you. Ms. Davis. Well, I'm actually running as an individual who understands what it's like to rebuild. Mm -hmm. I believe it's important that we have an individual who is in touch with the average Delawarean. My role will be to steward our tax dollars in the most appropriate way that speaks to the values of all Delawareans. And I truly am passionate about doing that. Okay, thank you. And Congresswoman. <laughs> thank you, Iris. Thanks, thanks to all of you for participating in this. I mean, we really wanted to showcase you mm -hmm. and make sure people knew who you were. Um, as your Congresswoman, you know, as we go into the next term, and I hope that we all have your vote on November 6th. My real focus is going to be what it was from the beginning. It was based on the stories that I heard from all of you. We took those stories and turned them into action. And it's everything from making sure that we focus on jobs and have a strong economy to bringing people together so that we can solve some of the big challenges like immigration reform, health care reform, which I hear about all up and down the state. We need to protect the Affordable Care Act, but continue to improve on it. And so when we look at the issues as we move forward, it's really going to be about those same things, jobs in the economy and making sure that we come together so that we can tackle the big issues. One of the first bills that uh, we'll be looking at on the docket is one I recently introduced, which was called Clean Slate. And it ties into the criminal justice reform piece. Another bill that we've just pa passed actually mm -hmm. was on domestic violence that I'm a lead sponsor. Uh, another bill is on sexual harassment and, and also bills on the environment. Uh, these are things that we've already done, but we're looking to do more because we've only just begun and we need your help and we need you to come out and vote. Okay, thank you. So now for a more laid back question, you know, what is your favorite part about being on the campaign trail outside of meeting the wonderful people in the state of Delaware? And we'll start with you, Ms. Jennings. My favorite part of going up and down our state um, on a daily basis in talking to people is to really know that what matters to Delawareans is not really what party you belong to. What matters is that they're safe. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, their children are safe when they go to school, when they go out to play, that they have jobs mm -hmm. that produce a livable wage. Mm -hmm. And that the system, the government, uh, is fair to them and responsive to their rights, that their rights are protected. And so as Attorney General, it's incumbent upon me to listen to all voices and to reach consensus on the issues because the values that unite us are so much greater than any issue that divides us. Thank you. Ms. McGinnis? Going up and down the state on a daily basis, sometimes a few times a day, um, besides the wonderful people and the relationships, I would say is the food. <laughs> I love, I was I, I've, how many times have I seen Mr. Yeah. Blunt at Libby's and, and then Season's Pizza and <laughs> yeah. then you're going to, you know. Apple Scrapple. Apple Scrapple, <laughs> going down state, you know, uh, Grottos, Nicola's, Season's, and then I, you know, Dogfish is all over Sussex County, so you get to go in 
constantly, and I, I don't know if anybody can tell, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're running around, but I just love going and trying new foods and going into so many different restaurants yeah, and you fun. kind of become a regular there. <laughs> All right, thank you. Miss Davis? Um, well, I will agree, you know, when we are going up and down the state, it's really fabulous meeting everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I love doing is when you set out at the beginning of your day and you know that you have so many things that you've got to get in there, it's um, a wonderful thing to look back at your day and have that satisfying and gratifying feeling mm -hmm. of a day well spent mm -hmm. and just strategically laid out before you. It's a lot of fun. It's, yeah, a true uh, accomplishment by the end of the day. Oh, I definitely agree. <laughs> <laughs> Congresswoman? Okay, so I would definitely sum up everything that, that, that has been said, um, but the only other thing I would add, uh, there's so many things, but one of the things that is really fun for me is actually experiencing other people's jobs. So, you know, people have been able to have me deliver packages. Um, I've actually gone on to a dairy farm. Our unions, the, the, the folks in labor, allowed me to get into a virtual headset and stand and operate forklifts from a perspective of the virtual world. And since the future of work is so important to me, that was really a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and thank you for, you know, sharing your story, sharing your time. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, Iris. Thank you so much. Thank you. You. Great job. Oh, Great job. Thank you. <laughs> um, some of you may remember in our previous episodes, we call this the member to member segment. Well, tonight, the member that we are profiling is Senator Tom Carper, a longtime friend and mentor. Senator, we have just two questions and we've asked these questions of great icons like John Lewis and most recently Cory Booker. The first question is, can you tell us about the importance of voting? Why is voting important? What is the second question? And the second <laughs> question for you is going to be, why are the stakes so high right. in this election? Somebody once actually actually did a, uh, a run through history mm -hmm. of all the times that the, uh, the outcome of an election, that could have been a congressional election, mm -hmm. mayor, uh, whatever, was decided by one vote. One vote. And a lot of times we don't think uh, that uh, our one vote is important. But in a little state like Delaware, where we don't have all that many people, every vote does, uh, does count. So that's why, I think that's one of the reasons why it's important. Also, I think it's important because we need to restore a system of checks and balances. You know, when they worked on the Constitution up the road in Pennsylvania all those years ago, they designed a system of checks and balances, three branches of government. They said they didn't want a king. Right. They didn't want a king, so they set it up so that no one person would be able to mess things up uh, for, forever. Or, right. And uh, it's, it's a hard way to govern, but it's, uh, it's worked for about 230 years. And mm -hmm. So it's important, but in, in, in order for checks and balances to work, people got to vote. I, I totally agree. I mean, one of the reasons we did this television show was really to encourage people to see the connection between their vote and their everyday life. And that really leads to the question of why the stakes are so high in this particular election. Could you mm -hmm. talk to the audience a little bit about that? Oh, sure. We live in Delaware, the lowest lying state in America. Mm -hmm. The lowest lying state in America. Our state is sinking gradually. Mm -hmm. The oceans are rising. We have these extreme weather events. We've seen more uh, her, uh, Category 5 hurricanes in the last year than we've had in, like, for, forever. Mm -hmm. We've... Um, have these forest fires that are going on, wildfires that are going on in the other side of the country in, oh gosh, Montana, mm -hmm. uh, Oregon, Washington, those forest uh, uh, wildfires as big as Delaware. Mm -hmm. We've uh, spent $300 billion last year on extreme weather events to try to fix things up and patch things up. Uh, the reason why all this is happening largely is because of global warming, too much carbon dioxide in the air, mm -hmm. and we can ignore it or uh, put our heads in the sand mm -hmm. or do something about it. And we need leaders who want to do something about it. Delaware is especially uh, endangered because of this. Right. You know, it's interesting because a lot of times people don't see the connection. And one of the things I got to attend recently with you, we both were uh, voting on the American Water Infrastructure Act. Oh, I've heard Act, of this, yes. And you were the uh, lead champion in a bill that was bipartisan passed almost unanimously, you think one vote shy in, in the, in the uh, Senate. But this bill, the reason why- And unanimously in the House. That's correct. Thank you, Lisa. Well, and it's important because people need to know that connects to Delaware. The fact that what you did actually creates jobs at the port. 5,000 jobs, 5,000 5, jobs. 5,000 jobs. 5,000 more jobs are gonna grow out of it, we think. The work that yeah. you did in, in, in the Senate also affects our health. 
as you talked about, you know, what we're seeing with climate change, that affects our health. And clean water. And clean Drinking water, water yeah. and also clean air. And mm -hmm. so we and just- beaches. And we, beaches. And our beaches. And our beaches. Exactly. We've got more five star beaches, I believe, than any state in America. Exactly. And our legislation allows the Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. to keep our beaches in great shape mm -hmm. and do so in a more cost effective right. way. Right. Well, we yeah. just thank you so much for yeah, thank you. all of your years of service. As you know, I started off as an intern in your office back you did? in 1987. No. Worked my she way was 12. Up. She was 12, folks. <laughs> I appreciate that to become our Secretary of Labor. We're so proud of you. And you've so given you. so many opportunities to Delawareans and you've done so much for our country. So we want to just thank you so much for being yeah. our special guest. I'm blessed. And again, everyone, remember that vote is precious, it's important. And as the Senator said, races have been lost by one vote. So your vote does count. Make sure you get out and use it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost out of time. In 2016, President Obama said that while he's not on the ballot, so much more is. Tolerance, democracy, justice, good schools, ending mass incarceration. If you didn't believe him then, you can believe him now. The president represented an important chapter in the history book that is America. I was proud to make history when you sent me to Washington to represent you. But our work is not done. Right now, it is more important than ever that we vote. Not only do you need to vote, but you need to have a plan. Bring your neighbors, your friends, your family with you. Because in the book that is America, we the people are the sequel. There will be so much more to talk about in the next few months. So I hope you'll continue the conversation and stay engaged after November 6th. After this show, stay tuned for some important tools that you can use when making your election day plan. I wanna thank you all. I wanna thank the guests. I wanna thank all of you for joining us throughout all of this. And I also wanna thank Iris Turner, our campaign coordinator for moderating the segment. Don't forget to keep this date on your calendar. November 6th, and that you check in to my campaign on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to vote November 6th. And remember, when Lisa goes to Washington, we all go to Washington.
Thanks to so many of you, we made history in 2016. I became Delaware's first woman and first person of color to represent us in Congress. It was an incredible evening, and I remember a lot of people asking me, what does it feel like to make history? I really didn't think about it. We were just doing the work. But then on the day that I was sworn in, that I stood on that house floor and raised my hand to take the oath, I carried with me a scarf that my sister created that was uh, an oath that allowed our great, great, great grandfather to have the right to vote. And at that moment, it really hit me that we are here because we're standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. I've spent my entire career working to ensure that all Delawareans have the opportunities they deserve. And that didn't stop when I went to Congress. Lisa has been working hard to help the businesses up and down the state find the capital they need to help them succeed in Delaware. She believes in engaging people of all ages and all backgrounds in the democratic process, and she's working to ensure all voices are heard. She listens to the young people of today and empowers them to be leaders of tomorrow. She understands that in order to be successful, we need a safe learning environment. She recognizes that the keys to enriching our children's futures and unleashing their innovative and creative spirit are a quality education and the arts. She believes that love is love and that discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity has no place in our society. She knows that if we're going to leave the world a better place for our daughters, we have much more work to do to ensure that they have equal opportunity so that they can reach their full potential. I'm running for re-election because there is still more work to be done, more for us to accomplish to truly leave our mark on history. This year, every voice must be heard. So I'm asking for your vote and your participation in our journey to re-election. And remember, when Lisa goes to Washington, we all go. We, we all, all go. go. We, we all, all go. go. We all go. We, we all, all go. go. We all go to Washington. I'm Lisa Blunt Rochester, and I approve this message.